I, I do. I do want to recognize uh, Barry again and uh, just say thank you for uh, for saying yes. I see God in this, and uh, because uh, that opened up an opportunity for us to be where we are today. So for God to do what He's called us to do, because as living water. We have always said we are to be water for those who are thirsting. And there is a lost and dying world even around us here in Montgomery County and the surrounding counties. There's people who do not know the Lord and they need the fresh drink of salvation that can only be found in Jesus. Amen? And, uh, and like that all has been testified, um, this building is just a tool that God used. It's just a cup. It's just a cup. There's all kinds of different cups. There's little, uh, the little small cups you get at the water fountain. There's the nice fancy glasses that you eat, that you drink from at fancy dinners. There's the plastic cups that you have in your cupboard. There's the McDonald's cups. How many of y'all had McDonald's cups growing up as a kid? Y'all had like, you know, y'all remember those days when, when you actually got those glass, those glass? And all the purpose for those cups is to distribute liquid, water. And, and, and so this morning, what I want us to know is we need to always be a church that, that can tell and ask people to, to come, to come and drink. Isaiah chapter 55 in our reading, if you would stand for the honor of reading God's word. We'll read this quickly and we will move. Come everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligent to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold. I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander, commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know, and a nation that did not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wick, wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose." And shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorns shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come the myrtle. And it shall make a name for the Lord. An everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are the water that we can drink from freely so that we might live. Lord, if there's someone here today that needs to drink of your fresh salvation, Lord, may they come to you today. May we always be reminded that in you and in you alone is our satisfaction. For it's in Jesus' name that I pray and all God's people said, amen, amen. I want to quickly go through this, this with you this morning. And I want to preach this text from the end to the top. I want to start with the bottom of the verses and go back up to the top. Because in the bottom of the verses there in verse 12 and 13, it says, For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorns shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. That is the place we all want to be, isn't it? It is a place of peace. It is the place where you are satisfied. There's so many people in this world that are unsatisfied. There's 
So many folks that go through life and they feel like they don't fit. They don't know what they're doing here and what they're supposed to be doing. And, and, and there's so many people that try it in many different ways. We all want to be at a place of peace, peace in our mind, peace in our heart, peace with our life, peace with our purpose, peace with who we are. And I have good news this morning. If that's where you want to be, if you want to be at a peace with God, if you want to know your place and you want to be where God is going to comfort you and shelter you and there's coming a day when when there's no more sin there's no more suffering there's no more heartache I long to be at a place you know where one day there there won't be any hospital rooms amen aren't you glad for that I mean my goodness this week as my dad was having surgery thank you for praying for him by the way you just see all of the Hundreds of people that come into that hospital. And that's just one hospital among many hospitals among the whole nation. Look at all the sickness. Some people deal with addiction and, and, and there's recovery help groups and there's some here. And that's just one little small group among many small groups that are all through not just this county but through the nation. How one day that, that stronghold will finally be broken. One, one day, one day there's no more fighting and arguing, cursing. There's a place of peace. There's a place where his city reigns and his water is flowing continually. That's the place where I want to be. And guess what? He's made a promise that you can be there. You ready? Look at verse 10. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Aren't you glad that when God does something, he does it? When he sets a plan in motion, no one can stop it. There is a promise that he made. he made. He made a promise that I'm going to do something, and when I go to do something, it's going to happen. Now, we can't say that all the time, can we? We can say, I'm going to try to do this, and sometimes we may accomplish it, and sometimes we what? We, we don't. But when God says, here's what I'm going to do, that's what he's going to do. And there's not, some, there's not a man, woman, there's not a government, there's not a nation, there's not anyone that can stop God from fulfilling his promise. And his promise was a plan. Look at verse 6. Here's what it says. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. He put a plan in motion so that you could know God. You could know him. Your maker, the one who made you, the one who fashioned you, the one who formed you, the one who made you so that you would know him and glorify him. He has made a way for you to know him and have a relationship with him. He says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon his name while he is near. The day of salvation is now. He's here now. He's close. He's here. He's only a prayer away. He's only a prayer away. You know how long the distance is to hell? About 19 inches. From your head to your heart. Your heart, as it longs for something, purpose, meaning, fulfillment, contentment, satisfaction. Your mind says you can find it in multiple ways. God says you find it in me. And all you need to do is call upon me because I'm near. Just a prayer. Call upon him. Trust in him. Let the wicked forsake his way, it says in verse 7, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Aren't you glad we have a forgiving, compassionate, loving God? He can forgive us of all of our sin, not just some of our sin. 
You see, he doesn't wait sin like we wait sin. We say, ooh, that's a bad sin. Right? How many of y'all have done that? Like, well, I've sinned, but I haven't sinned that bad. Now, Will, he was a bad sinner. <laughs> but now me, I, 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 I didn't do all of those things. Well, how many of y'all know that a sin is a sin? And if you're guilty of breaking one, you are, the penalty for breaking one is the same as breaking them all. But God is a compassionate God. He's willing to forgive us of all of our sins. You say, well, pastor, you don't know what I've done. It doesn't matter. He will forgive you of all your sins. His mercy is open to all who come to him. Verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. You know, this plan of salvation, uh, no man could have thought of that, could have they? No. That God himself would come down and say, you can't save yourself. You can't find the water on your own. I'll come, and I will do it. And he loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son. That whoever what? Should not perish, but have what? Now, his plan was through a person. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know, and a nation that did not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Who is the person? Jesus. Who is the witness to the peoples? Jesus. Who is the commander of the peoples? Jesus. Who is the nation that he called that they did not know? It's all the Gentiles. Because I have always said, how often is I, have, I, have, I, have I taught and preached? This, the gospel message, message was always supposed to go to the world. And when Jesus came, he broke down the barrier between the Jew and the Greek. The free and the slave. Where all are invited to come and drink from the water. Not just some, but all. The person, Jesus, is the solution. But there is a problem, isn't there? What's the problem? Look at verse 2. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? And your labor for that which does not satisfy? Isn't that, isn't that where the world is? Why do we seek to find life in things that don't bring life? Why do when our marriage falls apart or our finances start falling that we go to Applebee's Bar and Grill and not the living water of God's Word? Why do we try to find our answers in escape? Whether it be through alcohol or drugs or our sexual experiences or our pills or whatever tries to numb the pain. You see, what most people do is they're just numbing the reality of a brokenness that can only be healed through the grace of God. If I want to go to the place of peace, I will not find it in this world searching. I'll not find it through my education. You can get all the degrees you can have so many degrees behind your name, they can call you Fahrenheit. But that still won't bring you peace. 
You can accomplish all the things that this world has to offer. You can even have wealth and have much things to enjoy and still not have peace. You can hide and numb the pain through your work. You can hide and numb your pain and through many different ways. But I'm telling you, the only way you're going to find a perfect peace is by drinking the living water. The water of the Holy Spirit that comes to all who believes. He says, listen diligent to me there in verse 2, and eat what is good, and delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast love, sure for David. Sure love for David. It's, it's the covenant that God made at Calvary. Come to me. If you're thirsty, if life has drained you from joy and peace, come to the water, the living water that Jesus brings. Because the price, it is right. It's free. Verse 1, come everyone who thirsts. Come to the waters. He who has no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk. How are you going to buy this food? How are you going to buy this drink? Not with money. It's going to be without price. Out price from you. But it costs Jesus his life. Salvation is not a cheap, it's not cheap. It's very costly. It costs Jesus his blood that was poured out on Calvary's cross. It was the, the God-man, the Son of God who came and lived a sinless life and lived what we couldn't live and died the death that we should have died because the wages of sin is death. So he died the death that we should die and he took the judgment of God's wrath and it was placed upon him and by his death we can be forgiven and by his resurrection we can have life. Everlasting. I don't know where you've been trying to drink from. I don't know if you've tasted and seen that the Lord is good. But there is a God who offers a drink. Not so that you can just be numbed by the sense of hopelessness that maybe someone may feel. But a drink of remembrance of who you are now in Christ Jesus. So that you can have the perfect plan that God has placed in the person of Jesus Christ that takes you to the place of perfect peace. There is a drink that will satisfy. There is a drink that will heal. There's a drink that cleanses. There's a drink that fills. The living water, the water that is offered Without price. It's free. Come. For there is a fountain filled with blood. Drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunged beneath that flood. Lose all their guilty stains. The dying thief rejoiced to see. That fountain in his day. And there have I, though vile as he. Washed all my sins away I do believe I will believe that Jesus died for me that on the cross he shed his blood from sin to set me free dear dying lamb thy precious blood shall never lose its power till all the ransomed church of God 
be saved to sin no more. Ere since by faith I saw the stream thy, fly, thy flowing wounds supply, redeeming love has been my theme and shall be till I die. When this poor, lisping, stammering tongue lies silent in the grave, there, in a nobler, sweeter song, I'll sing thy power to save. There is a fountain flowing. There is the water of grace and mercy that you can drink from freely that will remove your sin as far as the east is from the west never to be remembered no more God will put those sins away your sentence of death lifted now granted life for all eternity once an enemy of God, now a child of God. Once on the road paved by our own lust and flesh to hell, now on a road paved by the blood of Christ to heaven. Jesus offers the dream that will satisfy the soul both now and forever. If no one else will drink, I will. I will drink from this fountain and only this fountain. I will drink from the water of God because he is the only one that offers the, the source that can save my soul. Now, I know some of you, you have experienced this. You have experienced salvation and you know and you've tasted that the Lord is good. If that is you, can you just say amen? amen? This morning, if you've never tasted and seen that the Lord is good, I'm going to ask you to come and drink from this living water. Drink from the fountain of grace and mercy. Drink from forgiveness by what God has done. And know that you can be made new. Amen? Let's pray, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that we would always drink from your fountain, that you and you alone would be our source, where we would take our healing, our salvation, our purpose, our hopes, our dreams will all be found in drinking from the water that you give. The salvation and mercy of God that flows over us, the Holy Spirit that flows through us so that we may be made new. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand. Let's sing. Let's worship. Let's respond. Let's come.